Welcome to another edition of our State Fair virtual interview. Let me start it again. Welcome to another edition of our State Fair virtual interviews. We are on the computer screen today. We would love to be at the State Fair on the State Fairgrounds at that great stage outside the U of M building, but uh, obviously things out of our control are not allowing us to, but we still want to get you some of the same great info. We want to tell you all about all the different sports. And right now under the spotlight is women's cross country. Head coach Sarah Hopkins joins us. Sarah, first of all, great to see you. It's been a while. I know, Mike. I miss you. <laughs> it did, no doubt. And I know we would prefer to be at the state fairgrounds, walking around, getting in our steps and finding some of those great foods, which then later we would need a run to, to get in to get the calories off. But um, I guess this will have to do to give us a team update. Um, first of all, what, um, what, what has this last handful of months been like? Obviously, uh, you know, from your standpoint of a track season getting uh, shut down at the end of last year and now here in the fall getting pushed back and trying to keep the team organized and upbeat and positive and motivated. Uh, what's that been like? Um, well, obviously, like everybody, it's been a challenge. I think um, the, the silver lining for us as distance runners is that, like, we can really still train. You know, we don't need facilities. We don't really need each other. Obviously, it's way more fun to have each other, but, um, but the training can get done. And so I think from that standpoint, we sort of counted ourselves a little bit lucky by comparison to other sports that um, we still were able to – to improve and get the job done and do some time trials and, and do some things that will allow us to see some progress and, and things like that. So um, again, I think as much as, as much as anybody can be lucky in this situation, I think being a distance runner is probably one of the best places to be. Um, and a lot of people I think took up running because they didn't have anything else to do or took up biking or things like that. So the trails got a little more crowded, but, um, but yeah, no, I think, you know, we were able to do that. Obviously again, the, the team component, even though sometimes it doesn't seem like there's a big team component to, the distance running is such a big thing. And so not having each other as a coach is hard, obviously as the team is hard. I think they did a great job um, of a captain's group of really like doing weekly Zooms and trying to kind of keep everybody on the same page. Um, you know, again, we have three seasons during the year. So it was obviously a hit to take it in the spring. And then, you know, you're okay, now we're getting ready for cross and we're getting ready for cross country and it's going to be a great fall. And then to take that hit, you know, for other fall sports is sort of their first hit. It feels kind of like our second or maybe even third because we lost our indoor championship too. But, um, but yeah, so that's obviously been a challenge, but this is a pretty resilient group of women and, um, and they really have been able to find ways to connect with one another. And we've tried to find ways to keep them connected. And like I said, this morning was our first practice and we had a small group, but it was great to have a group and, and be together and have it not feel as weird or as different as maybe it, it felt like it might. And to kind of feel like it's, you can snap back to normal faster than you think was, was great. Yeah, was it was there some comfort in seeing some familiar faces in person after probably a summer full of Zoom meetings too? Oh yeah, yeah. I came in and I was like, I miss my people. You're not my family, and it's very nice that you're not my family. I love my family dearly, but it's been six months of 24/7 family. So um, yeah, it's great to see the whites of people's eyes and see people actually doing what we love to do and be together and be able to just laugh and joke and um, that stuff just doesn't come across quite the same way over a computer screen, obviously. So. Um, yeah, it was, it was great. All right, well, let's uh, talk and introduce uh, some of your two athletes that are with us here on our virtual State Fair stage. Let's start with Abby Kohut Jackson, who you and I have done this before. We had our, our golfer talk earlier in the uh, spring where we were able to uh, talk about what your spring and summer uh, was like. And I know we, I remember talking specifically about your disappointment in missing the Drake Relays, which is near your hometown. Um, are you back in Minneapolis now or still in Iowa? Yeah, I am back in Minneapolis. I've been here for most of summer, so it's been good. And as a coach said, uh, distance runners, you're able to get out. I mean, almost by definition, you're social distancing. I mean, there is pack running, I know, but you, you, the idea of distance running and competition is to put some distance between you and whoever uh, is around you. So I suppose from that angle, you're able to do a lot of training uh, through the summer months. Yeah, for sure. And like, especially being on my own or in like a really small group, it's been pretty easy to kind of just give people space on the trails or get out somewhere that's a little, little more open. So it hasn't been too tough, which is really nice. And Anastasia Korzanowski is with us as well. She's uh, from right here in the Twin Cities, Chan Hassan. And uh, first of all, good to see you. And, and how was your summer? Were you able to get out and uh, get a lot of miles uh, on? Yeah, um, it was honestly it almost didn't feel it different from what we've done in the past because obviously, you know, we wish we could be with people, but we've never actually had scheduled practices in the summer anyway. So running with our friends was always something that we had to schedule on our own. And so in some ways we tried to make it feel as normal as possible. And, you know, obviously still being safe and distancing, but we were able to still get to other people because I've been also back on campus for the majority of the summer. So yeah, for the most part, 
you know, trying to just do what we always do and hope for the best in a way. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Well, coach, is most everyone then on the team back or as classes get started, even if it's distance learning, will they be back by the time, let's say early September hits? Yeah, so we're kind of in phases right now. So the group that we have today is, is the group that's basically been around all summer. Um, you know, typically today would be our first day of practice and we'd be leaving for camp tomorrow. We'd be going up to Ely tomorrow. So actually in a good way, we've never been able to come to the state fair because we're always up at camp. So this is our first state fair experience because um, we're here. But uh, so silver linings. Um, but yeah, so, so really right now we have a small group of about 15. It's about half of our roster that's here. Um, we'll add in in another week or so, we'll add our sophomores because their leases don't start until September 1. So that group of sort of second year kids that are just moving into off-campus housing at the end of the summer, they'll get to add into the group. And then we just kind of have to wait on the freshmen because they are, you know, they got bumped back a couple weeks in their dorm moving. And so we're still sort of rolling with the punches with that group to see when they're going to get to campus. But um, hopefully by the time classes start, we'll have everyone minus the eight freshmen, um, which obviously is a bummer, but at least, you know, we'll have everybody else here and on campus and practicing together um, relatively normally throughout the fall. And then hopefully we'll add the freshmen in relatively soon. And what are you allowed to do practice wise and kind of, I mean, it's hard to plan because things can change literally day by day, but what, are, what is your hope here is uh, over the next few months that you can do to, to train and, and improve and, and all those things. Yeah. You know, it, it's actually kind of exciting. Like I was telling the captains the other day and they, the girls probably don't feel this way because they just want to go and, and race and beat people. But um, as distance runners, we never get to be together and not be in season. You know, we're always, we get together and then it's cross country and we're racing right away. And then we go right into indoor, we go right into outdoor. And then we have a summer where I intentionally try to like let them be <laughs> because we've been together for so long and we've never had an off season. So we really never get to be on campus together as a unit and really focus on some of the little stuff and maybe experiment or do some different things because we're always trying to get ready for that next race. And so having the fall to have a little flexibility to still hopefully do some inner squads and compete and time trials and things like that. Um, but to be able to have some flexibility in, in experimenting or adding some new things into practice or not traveling every weekend um, will allow us, I think, to get in a routine that we don't normally get to get into. So I do think that there's some exciting stuff that we're going to kind of try out this fall and decide if it's, if it'll stick or if it won't and not have it affect racing. Um, but yeah, today felt very normal. It was fun. I mean, we obviously had masks on and, you know, we, we had to, make sure we weren't you know, sharing water bottles and staying more spread out than normal. But other than that, it really felt um, very much normal, which was, which was awesome. So um, my plan is to definitely do some time trials the same weekends we would typically have kind of some of our bigger races so that we can really see how training is progressing throughout the fall. Um, we've talked amongst the Big Ten, too, of maybe trying to potentially, if the rules allow, do some like virtual racing with other teams and maybe, you know, put our times into a spreadsheet and see who wins and things like that to kind of keep it competitive and keep it fun for the women, but um, those are all things that will evolve as the fall goes on. But yeah, definitely getting back to the basics a little bit and, and just training hard and, and knowing that whenever we get a chance to compete again, if it's the indoor season or the outdoor season or whenever it is, that we'll be ready to rock and roll. Abby, let me ask you about the motivation side of it. As Coach mentioned, I mean, probably what you guys really enjoy is getting out on a golf course or someplace and competing against teams from the Big Ten and around the country and, and putting your best against their best. Without that out there, like uh, – you know, hey, this would have been a meet on Saturday. Well, it's not there now. Does that make it harder to, oh, I'm going to go out and put in my eight miles on Tuesday? Or how do you keep doing that, you know, week after week after week, knowing that that, that reward, so to speak, is, is unknown yet when it might show up? Yeah, it's definitely very different. Like, it's just not like anything we've ever had in our, you know, 10, 11 years of running. But I will say that like having practice helps so much. And like, like over the summer, I've never really questioned my running, even knowing like we might not have a season. It was kind of like, this is just what we do. But like just having that group atmosphere makes such a big difference. Like being together at practice for an easy run and just like chatting away feel like that feels normal, even though like we might not get to do this race or that race, like what we do every single day doesn't have to change that much. And sort of like coach hop was saying, like the races will roll around when they do. And like, we know that we'll be ready, but in the meantime, just having that group like atmosphere makes a really big difference. 
And Anastasia, I'll ask you too along those lines from like for me and most people that aren't what you'd call runners or competitive runners, it's a lot of work. I mean, I'm not saying you guys don't work, but you enjoy it, right? I mean, it's something like I have a brother-in-law who was a college cross country runner and he still goes out and he runs because he wants to run and he looks forward to it. I would assume that that's probably, uh, so, so motivation might be less of a problem for you guys than, uh, than maybe for a guy like me who, uh, if I go out and do, you know, two miles, it's a, it's a pain in the you know what. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely something that, I mean, to compete at this level, running has to be something that you love because you really, putting in the work that we do, you have to love doing it or else you're not going to see success. So it absolutely is still enjoyable. I still love going out on a run. But yeah, motivation still, without having races, you have had to kind of have a new mindset, especially for me. I'm someone who very much loves the competing part of it. And so it was almost trying to figure out that balance of finding new goals for yourself. It might not be about having the race, but you know, set a new goal. Okay, can I run the most miles this week that I've ever run before? Can I find my new longest long run? So, so that was kind of something that I did just to still have tangible goals that I could look at to motivate me. But yeah, it's, it's always, like, I do agree that it is easier for us since we do love to run, but finding the new ways that give you that competitive aspect and still enjoying that part of it as well. Do you, when you run, um, if you're on the street or the sidewalk or the grass or a park or wherever you might be running, do you, do you also try to find some new places to go just for a change of scenery and a fresh look? Um, it definitely is something that I wish I did more because I get very sick of the trails. We have our classic loops on campus that we all know way too well, especially our workout loops. But that was the one thing that I actually enjoyed about when I was home for a couple months was going back to the trails that I ran in high school that I hadn't been on in years. So that was fun. But Coach Hopkins also, we always do a Sunday at long runs where we'll, where we'll drive somewhere new. So I'm hoping that we can continue doing that this fall because I, I do love that part of it, finding new places to go and switching up the scenery a little bit. I always like to ask runners, uh, so Abby, what is your typical week, you know, in terms of do you take a day off? Do you run every day? How many miles in a seven-day stretch might you want to do to to develop? Uh, one, stay in shape, and two, maybe develop and push further. Yeah, it depends a lot on the runner, and, like, that's one thing that we are very lucky that we can have that individualization. So, like, for me, like, when I'm in season, I might take a day off more like once a week or once every two weeks. When I'm doing more mileage, it might be more like once every three weeks. But um, mileage also ranges too. Like a down week might be more like 45, where like a higher mileage week might be more like 65. So we have quite a range, which kind of like that ebb and flow helps. And so it's not just like every week I run like the same miles. But and then having workout days roughly every other day helps break it up too. So you're not running like the same eight miles every single day. <laughs> Coach, you were ramping up for this fall too, right? This fall and next fall, you felt really good about it. So uh, from that standpoint, what was the disappointment level? Even though there's some excitement, like you said, in developing and doing some things, what was the disappointment level in not being able to, to go out and make another NCAA and contend for a big 10? Yeah. You know, it, it, not going to lie, like it hit pretty hard because we, you know, we made some strategic decisions last year to redshirt Megan and Bethany Haas and bring them back for this fall and try to kind of line everybody up um, and get everybody's eligibilities figured out. And, and really, we really did target this fall um, and knew we could be really, really competitive. So um, that obviously stung quite a bit. I mean, it stings to miss a season regardless, but when you feel like this could be the best set of athletes we've ever assembled on our campus in the history of Minnesota cross country, which I don't think is a big stretch to say that. Um, obviously that's a, a little bit harder pill to swallow too. Um, but I, I, I do feel better about the fact that I think we're, we're trying to find a way to, to realign some things and realign some things to get that to work for next fall and try to, you know, get as many people back as we can with the NCAA giving eligibility back and things like that. So I think that softens the blow a little bit that we, we can kind of hopefully in some ways recreate as much as we can, um, next fall and maybe be even better next fall with another year of development. Um, for some of our younger kids and hopefully convince a bunch of our older kids to, to give it another go. But um, yeah, I mean, like I said, it, you, you always look back and you're like, oh, this plan sounds great. And, and every time you feel like you kind of try to work the system a little bit, it feels like it bites you in the butt with either somebody getting hurt or whatever. And, and who knew that this was how it was going to bite me in the butt. But, um, you know, part of me looks back on last fall and says like, ah, oh, we should just sort of should have run those guys and tried to win last fall. But um, at the end of the day, at that time, it was the best decision we could have made for everybody and the team. And, you know, they had a great fall last fall, really coming together and doing it without Megan and Bethany. And then, you know, we'll just have to keep grinding at it and hopefully we get another opportunity. But, um, but I do think, like I said, 
I was, I was saying that this morning as I was watching them just do like some strides on the track, which is a super easy, just kind of post easy run thing. And I was like, I kind of feel like all fall, I'm going to watch some of these workouts and be super excited about them and then be really pissed off at the same time. Right, right. And like, it's going to be a kind of a range of emotions to like, man, look how good this group is. This is awesome. Like, ah, why aren't we racing people right now? So um, I think it is going to be emotional all fall in some different ways to kind of know maybe what could have been but also to know that we are still building and we are lucky that we have three seasons in a year and um this isn't the only thing we have this year so there's a lot of things that we can still accomplish even in this calendar year for people that maybe won't come back next year there's still a lot to accomplish this year yeah and i was going to ask you about that so like volleyball and football have fall competition soccer and there's a hope they will play a spring season for you i would think it's a little more complicated because tracks there Hard to run cross country in January in Minnesota as well, I suppose. So what what does that mean? I mean, is there no cross country? Will it just be a track season if it happens? Or how does that, how is that going to unfold? Yeah, I mean, that's my understanding at this point. I think that was something we expressed as a cross country coaches group from the beginning was like, it all sounds great to move a season to the spring, but for cross country kids, that's just not feasible. Um, you know, we're track runners too. And a lot of us are even track runners before we're cross country runners in terms of what we're best at. And so um, that's just not a feasible concept. And even, you know, getting more technical with it from a scholarship standpoint, it's all under the track blanket. And so like to take a group away from the track group, isn't fair to those guys either when they're trying to contend for a big 10 title. So, um, so I, I think that's just going to be how it flows. There may be, you know, some creativity with it that I don't know about right now. You know, if, if we lose an indoor season, do they try to move cross to indoor? I, you know, all things that as we've learned in COVID, you just have to roll with the punches. But um, as of right now, my guess is, you know, this season just sort of dissolves. And then instead of trying to recreate it in the spring, we just wait till fall of 21 is, is the sense that I get as of now from, from the NCAA. So what, what's your optimism or hope that there will be track uh, in talking to some of the other coaches, they believe firmly that something will happen in the spring. I hope so. <laughs> I mean, I think that's, you know, you all, everybody has to, keep hoping and keep, you know, focused on what is next. Um, I was telling our captains this morning, I think for me, the optimism doesn't so much come from COVID is going to disappear in the winter or we're going to find a vaccine in the winter. For me, the optimism comes from all these things you're hearing just in the last couple of days, even with the saliva testing and what the NBA is doing and with the paper testing or whatever that they just, you know, you can get results in 15 minutes and you can do it at your house. Like those are the things that I have a hope that, you know, over the next three or four months, that's the part that evolves. And that's the part that makes it easier for us to, to, you know, diagnose faster and quarantine faster. Cause right now, even though we're lucky that we can test as often as we do, it still takes 24 to 36 hours to get a test result back. And so if you can get it back in 15 minutes, you're obviously going to be a lot better off. So for me, that's, that's where my hope lies is, is the technology on that side that we can get that figured out as a country and as a state. And, and hopefully that will help us manage January, February, March, April better. But um, yeah, again, it's, there's a lot of scientists that are a lot smarter than me that'll tell us when it's time to go. You know, we have great doctors here that will, are absolutely chomping at the bit, just like we are to get us back out there. And so, you know, for them to shut us down, they don't take lightly and they're absolutely wanting us to get back out there as soon as they find it medically safe. And I have a hundred percent faith that they're taking care of us. And that's the most important thing couple of quick ones before they kick us off of our virtual stage here. Anastasia, you're from Chanhassen, so I have to ask about the state fair since these are virtual state fair mm -hmm. meetings. Um, have you, uh, how often do you go? Uh, have you been going since you were young? Do you like it? Do you want to stay away because it's too crowded? What's your, well, what's your uh, take on the Minnesota state fair? Um, we've always been a huge state fair family. I can remember going from honestly as young as probably two years old, if I'm being honest. Um, so many good memories with my whole family. And then we went, I'd say almost every year. I can't remember many years that we didn't go unless we were traveling or on vacation. And then since I've been at college now, I've gone every year with my friends as well. So yeah, big fan. It's just, it's just such a fun gathering. There's people watching, there's the greatest food, there's activities. I just, I think there's nothing that you can't love about the state fair. <laughs> what is your, uh, do you have some places that you, uh, this is a must stop, maybe two or three food stands or animal showings or exhibits or anything like that? Yeah, I'm definitely not someone who plans it out. I, I let myself just enjoy the day and walk around, but I always have to hit the mini donut stand, cheese curds, um, and then also Sweet Martha's Cookies. Those are my like top three must-haves, but I also will say I love going over to like the dairy barn and getting the fresh ice cream because that's great as well. Um, 
I also had the haunted house once. That was a mistake. We'll never do that again. <laughs> but um, all the animals are fun too. I, I do enjoy going to the, um, seeing like all the little babies be born. I got to see a cow take its first steps once at the state fair. So big memory there, but yeah, I love it all. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, and you, you eat a couple buckets of cookies and, and some of the <laughs> other things in a malt or a shake. Mm -hmm. um, for you, it's great because you just go home and do an eight mile run and it's all uh, all good, right? Yeah, exactly. No worries there. <laughs> Abby, how about you? Now, you're from Iowa and I know the Iowa State Fair is big. I don't think it's quite as big as the Minnesota State Fair. Have you been to the Minnesota version of the State Fair? Yeah, I think I've only actually been once. And so I was obviously hoping to go again this year, but um, it's kind of similar to Iowa's, but also different. Like they both have their own, like very exciting different parts too. <laughs> yeah, what, uh, so what, what are your, uh, did you remember when you went to the Minnesota State Fair, what your uh, favorite foods were? And as long as we have you, um, when you go to the Iowa State Fair, maybe there's something there that's different than Minnesota that, that you'd want to uh, talk about as well. <laughs> yeah, so I'm kind of an inconsistent fair goer. I can't say I've been every year like Anastasia. But um, I remember last year distinctly getting Sweet Martha's cookies and loving them with my whole heart. Um, and the Iowa State Fair does these like butter carvings. And I don't know if, if like Minnesota does that. But um, Iowa has like this big butter cow every year that's like a really big deal. And also just these like very large animals that like are interesting to see because I'm like I never knew a cow could be that big and so those are kind of those are highlights of the Iowa State Fair. <laughs> no, no doubt no doubt. Um, Coach how about you? Um, you mentioned that you guys train kind of this time of year in, in Ely for a while so have you been able to uh, to get out and take the family or the team or what have you? Yeah so my husband and I live like six blocks from the fair. We just live over in uh, the St. Anthony Park area in St. Paul. So we are very exposed to the fair, whether we want to be or not, because our neighborhood turns into chaos. Um, I'm honestly not a, I have to go to the fair every year type of person. Um, my son has now decided that he loves the fair. He's five and he's gone the last two years and has decided that it is the greatest place in the world. So I might have to become an every year state fair goer now. Um, <laughs> Mass, I was going to say, we've been biking through the fairgrounds because he's learned how to bike and it's great to bike over there because it's not very trafficy right now. And uh, he found the haunted house and he's very excited about the haunted house <laughs> because he says he's not scared of anything at five. Uh, <laughs> so I keep warning him that he does not want to go in this haunted house. So we'll see next year if he actually still is brave enough to try it out. And I, I will dis dissuade it. But, um, but yeah, when, when we do end up going, um, I obviously have to, I think I have three or four like buckets from Sweet Martha's that just we use for other things around the house. Um, my grandma's name was Martha and my daughter's middle name is Martha. So that also kind of ties into the Sweet Martha's. Um, but yeah, I, I, the team will tell you I have an aversion to birds. So like I stay completely away from the poultry barn, like it gives me the sweats. Um, but I do like the birthing barn, like the Miracle of Life Center. I think that's fun. Um, and my son really likes the like gondolas that go over the top and um, and some of the like carnival type rides. Um, so yeah, I mean, we just kind of, we wander, but like I said, you know, ask me in a few more years and I might be a much more attuned to the state fair because Jack will make me, make me go multiple times because it's so close to our house. Yeah, you'll be going all the time. Well, very good. Hey, we appreciate the time and the insight. Um, great to see everybody. I'm glad the practice is underway and you guys get to hang out with each other and school year is going to come up soon and uh, good luck on a spring track season and uh, hopefully uh, everything will be back to normal a year from now and maybe we all can uh, uh, meet at that uh, state fair uh, stage and uh, we'll uh, we'll enjoy the food together. Thanks, Mike. All right. Thank so, you so much. Thank Thanks. you. Appreciate it. That's our state fair interview, women's cross country. Thank you.